Hey everybody. I'm walking home from the convenience store and walking home is kind of in quotes because I'm walking actually away from my home. But uh, I'm kind of taking the long way back just because I've been sitting in my apartment all day long. And when I get back there, I'll be sitting again. I've done many a kettlebell swing today, but uh, that doesn't impress the, uh, the step counter on my phone and on my fitness band. So I'm Really, I'm out here walking for my own benefit, but also I'm walking for credit. <laughs> Steps credited. <sighs> Today, I have mostly been working on content for the print version of the Geb comic strip. Comic book, I guess. Been working on the inside front cover, or no, inside back cover. This is what it looked like when I left to go to the store. Probably got another couple hours worth of work to put into it. Oh, there's a lot that goes into a comic book. Particularly when there's no ads and uh, no editorial content, and no letters from readers or any of the other things that comic book companies use to fill up space in their, their books. Anyway, my very brief exchange with the uh, young person behind the counter at the convenience store is likely to be the only face-to-face -face human interaction I have today. It's one place where my uh, daily experience is quite impoverished. That's one of the main things I'm looking to remedy with this move to Puerto Rico. Oh, have a look. at the state of the streets and the sidewalks. It's above freezing right now, but there's still plenty of ice and snow. If I'm not careful, say if I didn't look where I was going because I was shooting a video as I walked, I could slip on the ice and fall into a puddle. <laughs> what a great combination that would be. Ah, so I'm headed for the steps. Let's see, there the steps are kind of in frame. Heading for the steps. There are, I think, 74 steps. Usually when I walk up them, I have a heavy backpack full of groceries. Now I have just a very light shopping bag with snacks. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna need two hands for climbing these steps. There, you can see the steps. All right, and now I'm back at home. Behind me are four small glass bottles. Each one is colored glass, either brown or green. It has a screw-on cap. And when you remove the screw-on cap, it's a dropper. This is just so elegant. I just... I love these things. So as you can see in the close-up, most of them are for uh, CBD oil. This one is actually beard oil. The, the label is all hard to read, but it's uh, Honest Amish beard oil. I have a collection of these because I can't bring myself to throw them away. They're such fine, fine little bottles. They're just as useful now as they were when I first got them, except there's nothing in them anymore. But it just seems like such a waste to throw them away or even to put them in the recycling because really there's not much difference between landfill and recycling. It just pains me to use these disposably. This could be used for years, but who would want it? In our society where, you know, to get the contents to refill it, it the refill will come with a bottle. Ah. Anyway, I've resolved that this video will be about nothing at all, other than my little trip down to the store and the fact that I saw, I saw a few people today, most of them just out the window, but I only spoke to one person and it was at the cash register at the convenience store and I didn't even really need to go to the store. I just walked down there because otherwise I would have spent the whole day here in my apartment. 
<sighs> anyway, the last video I posted I thought was a pretty substantial, you know, little meaty piece of interview with my friend Eric, and uh, we were talking about artificial intelligence and how it doesn't understand anything, and he mentioned the blog AI Weirdness. And the author of the blog has taken some of the blog materials and made them into a book called You Look Like a Thing and I Love You. And I'm, I've been listening to the audiobook for the past day and a half. And it's delightful, although painfully repetitive. The whole content of the book can be boiled down to many, many examples of how AI, well, in actuality being completely without understanding and completely without intelligence is really creative and shows great ingenuity and intelligence in finding ways to satisfy the explicit requirements that you give it in assigning it a task without actually doing it in a way that is useful to you. Basically, it satisfies the letter of the law while violating the spirit of the law, and it does so in really ingenious ways. So the book is just example after example after example of how AI, you know, machine learning algorithms are really difficult to train to get them to do something useful. Time and again, you know, what these algorithms demonstrate is that we ourselves don't understand how it is that we learn or how it is that we decide about, you know, how to go about achieving a goal. We don't understand how our own minds think, which makes it hard to uh, explicitly, well, this isn't even explicitly programming a machine to do things. I mean, that, if you know all the steps in a process, and you know, if a process is really well known, you can code it step by step. That's old fashioned artificial intelligence. That's old fashioned, just operational instructions that you explicitly provide. Yeah, sometimes that produces surprising results, but not like training an algorithm, a learning algorithm. <laughs> That's where the machines get really, really creative in the way that evolution is creative. Basically, just trying everything that is possible within the parameters given and everything that doesn't work is weeded out you know it gets whittled away and what what's left is what works <sighs> i said this video would be about nothing um this should probably be its own separate video but i'll just throw it out there right quick i'm struggling as to what to do with my cat she's 15 years old she was my son's cat when i was married and, you know, when the marriage ended, the cats, there were two of them at the time, went with me. Or, you know, they were left behind. <laughs> so I've been with this cat for 15 years, 15 really, you know, defining years of my middle age. And I can't just, like, drop her at my mom's and forget about her. But it's going to be a real hassle moving to San Juan, Puerto Rico with a cat. I can sleep on couches quite easily. I can sleep in strange places. You know, I can, if I need to, spend a night in an airport and not have a bed or even recline at all. The cat needs a familiar place and she needs the litter box and she needs to feel safe enough that she can, you know, let her guard down to eat and drink and traveling really sucks for her. And what I want to do is, you know, for the first month that I'm there is just stay, you know, get a long-term Airbnb. And all of the ones in the city say no pets. And I've been writing to people, you know, to the uh, the hosts, uh, the people who put up these listings, these Airbnb listings, you know, saying, hey, and explaining the situation, saying, can I get an exception for my very good kitty? And none of them have written back, which I'm, I'm learning is just the way it is on the island. I have written to many co-working spaces asking if I could set up a tour for when I was there on my visit this coming week. Not sure how many I've contacted. I know exactly how many have responded to my requests. <laughs> you know, business is the business of America. Not so much in the Caribbean. I realize that Puerto Rico is part of the United States, but culturally, <laughs> it's its own thing. You know, I watched a video. It's an animation showing all of the, um, the movements of people from Africa to the Americas as part of the slave trade. And it's really weird to watch because you don't realize until you see it played out, most of the slaves taken from Africa went to the Caribbean. After the Caribbean, South America had the second most, uh, and those are mostly Brazil, and then North America is a distant, distant, 
distant third. And, you know, why is that? And what it occurs, what occurs to me is that, well, in the United States, it sucked to be a slave. Absolutely, it sucked. But most slaves in the U.S. lived long enough to form a pair bond and produce children, which is the next generation of slaves. Whereas in the Caribbean, they just got worked to death. And they did not have the opportunity to form pair bonds and, and make more of themselves. The colonial masters, the plantation owners, these slave ships and the slavers, they just had a business. They just kept shipping them to the Caribbean and they would die and they'd ship in more and work them to death. And that was that. I'll put a link to the video. I mean, it's, it's not my video. I can't really intercut it into this one, but uh, do watch it. It's, it's only a couple minutes worth of your life, but it's kind of brutal. <laughs> brutal on the soul. I mean, obviously what it represents is a level of brutality that none of us can imagine. But just the experience of watching the animation. And there are no human figures in the animation. It's just dots, basically, going from one part of the map to another. But it's brutal. Anyway, I <laughs> don't know where that came from, but... Uh, if you have any advice on how I can transport my cat in a way that, you know, is not too traumatic for her or for me, mostly for her, because I'll get over it. Let me know. Talk to you later.